Would you ever dream of spraying alcohol on your painting? In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating why you want to try this effective technique. Watch me create a vibrant underpainting using ink tense blocks. And yes, I am going to use alcohol in a little spritzer bottle with a stiff bristle brush to literally spray the alcohol and create a loose and lively underpainting with complementary color. And I promise you, this creates such a golden glow beneath your painting, you're gonna wanna try it. All right, let's get started. And here is a basic supply list for this tutorial. You'll need a water-friendly pastel surface. I'll be using Fisher 400. And you'll need some complementary colors for this underpainting. I'll be using ink tense blocks, but you could substitute these with pastels, acrylic ink, even watercolor. You'll need some regular drugstore alcohol and a spritzer bottle. You'll also need a brush of sorts. I like using a coarse brush or a stiff bristle brush and you'll need some soft pastels. These are some of the brands that I'll be using in this tutorial, and I'll share more as I paint. But as I always say, use what you have. You can substitute many of these products. I found a beautiful reference image from unsplash.com. Thank you to Esteban Castle. Now I did what I often do. I altered the photo. I wanted to make this very warm. If you're a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will have access to this altered or edited photo. The surface that I'm using is one of my favorite. It's Fisher 400. It's a 400 grit pastel paper. I buy it from Pro Art Panels. And I'm working large this time. This is a 16 by 20, or I've turned it sideways, 20 by 16 sheet. And I've taped off the bottom to make it the same proportion as my reference image. But I wanna show you my setup here. Here is the, on the bottom is the photo I altered. And you should be able to see that it's much warmer than the one on the top, the original. I'm gonna be using various pastels. This is just a little example of some of the pastels I'm choosing from. If you're a patron of mine, once again, you'll get some extra goodies. You're going to be receiving my color notes for this particular painting. Now it's time to create this glowing underpainting and demonstrate spraying on the alcohol. I'll be using a product called Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. It's literally compressed ink and they're very vibrant. You don't have to have this product. You could use the colors that I'm going to use in pastel or even watercolor or acrylic ink. But I have the big set, the 72 set, and it has two layers of these ink tense blocks. They're really fun. So now let me tell you why I'm doing an underpainting and my color theory concept here. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of lavender and violet. And what's the complement to that? It's opposite on the color wheel. It's gonna be orange, yellow, orange, and yellow. And I'm going to choose some of these Derwent ink tense blocks that are complements to purple, all of these warm colors. Now I am choosing, you see one that's kind of a dark purple, I'm putting them to the side. And I am using a few pinks, but I'm choosing some different values of warmer colors. And I'm going to show you all of these colors as I use them. And uh, I add even another little uh, kind of uh, purple color here, magenta purple right there. And like I said, you could totally use soft pastels for this stage, exactly like I'm using it, you could use pastels with similar colors. For my initial very basic sketch, I'm using a marker. This is a waterproof marker, it's a Tombow marker. Uh, I recommend not using the wide brush side, there's two different tips to it. I use the fine point side. And all I'm doing is getting in basic shapes. I'm going to divide my surface and my reference image into four quadrants. And when you're working large like this, it really helps you to see the shapes better. The larger you get with a painting, uh, the more difficult it is to get the sketch in. So again, I'm just making marks on my reference image as well, just halfway marks vertically and horizontally. And this just makes it so much easier to see where the shapes are. Now I'm speeding this up quite a bit and I'm keeping this purposely very loose. All I'm focusing on is some of these big shapes. Look at those big shapes. I'm looking at positive and negative shapes. I can see there's a big white hole in the sky to the left. There's another kind of white hole to the right. I've got some flowers. I've got some background trees. Oh, and the reason I'm using a marker versus charcoal or pencil is because when I go to add this alcohol, the marker's gonna stay in place and not drip and disappear. With the sketch done, it's time to add the Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. 
All right, now what I'm doing with this lightest value of my color selections, I broke it off to be a little piece. I'm trying to get in some of the golden glow of the sky and also some of my lightest values. Um, some of the flowers are very light, so that's why I put some of those down. Just added the yellow where I saw the lightest values in the reference image. Now I'm using the next darkest value in the ink tints blocks I selected, which is an orange color. And I'm just looking at some areas that might not be as light, but they're still on the lighter end of the value scale. And now to spritz on some alcohol. These two little spritzer bottles you see are not um, Victoria's Secret body spray. Uh, they're just little bottles that I use. One of mine has water and one has alcohol. I'm gonna be using the one that has alcohol. And this is a little stiff bristle brush. I love it, it's cheap. Here's another one that I have that's larger. I'll be using these two brushes um, just to brush in the alcohol on the surface. You could use any brushes that you have that work, but sometimes a frayed um, kind of loose brush like this works great. And you can see I'm spraying in little sections, working little um, sections at a time, and I'm spraying enough of the alcohol to kind of let it be a little bit drippy, but not so drippy that it just runs down the painting. And I'm pretty sure in this bottle of alcohol, it's kind of like a 60-40 a mix of alcohol, regular store-bought alcohol, and water. So I'm, I don't think it's 100% uh, alcohol in the bottle. Now, I wanted to get in, and I'm going to blow it dry right now just to make sure it's dry. I wanted to get in my lightest golden values first, which is really going to create the golden glow for the final painting that I'm imagining. And now I'm adding the value that will be um, the trees. I use the kind of the darker magenta purple and now I'm using this kind of pink color for that group of trees that's a little bit further in the distance on the left there and I'm continuing with the concept of trees that are a little further away. I'm using the pinkish tone. Trees that are closer I'm using more of the purple magenta tone and it works great because you know in sunlight uh, wherever it's casting, there's going to be warmer tones that it creates. And so I felt like these purples and pinks were really great for my darker values. And now I'm using the purple just to block in some of the grass shapes. Notice I'm working around the flower shapes. I want that golden glow to really shine underneath these lavender flowers I'll be creating. So I didn't want to cover them up with a darker value. And I believe that's what really made this painting glow at the end. So now I put in a little bit of that pink um, where the sun is really hitting that tree that's kind of up in the uh, right area there. Um, and then I added the dark value for the tree that's all the way on the right. And now again, you can see I'm spraying and just getting some looseness to it, but not letting it totally drip all over the place. And even though I'm speeding up this footage, I think you can still get the idea. And you can actually see a little more clearly how I'm working in sections. And also because of the sped up version, you can see kind of how much it's dripping and how I have it sprayed on enough to get some nice drips, but it's not so watered down or alcoholed down that it drips right off the page. And now I've set it back to real time so that you can kind of get an idea of how this is working. Um, I'm just spraying, 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 and even lifting up in certain areas rather than pulling it down over those areas that I avoided for the flowers. And this is all about value at this point. This is a value underpainting right now. I am just examining my reference image and keeping my lightest yellows where it is it is the lightest in the reference image. Middle values are kind of some of those middle values amongst the flowers in the middle ground. Darker values where the trees are and in those foreground grasses. Here is where the underpainting is at this stage, and I'm going to add one more value with the Derwent Ink Tints blocks. I've got a really dark purple now, and I'm going to use it in my areas that have the darkest values, definitely the trees. Vertical elements in a landscape are almost always darker, and they're definitely darker the closer that they are to the viewer in the image. So just kind of sketching in with this, and notice too, at each stage, I let 
um, the underpainting dry before I added the next color. I'm reinforcing a little bit of that yellow. Now, why did I do this in stages, letting each kind of value family dry? Well, if I had done the whole value study with all of these ink tense blocks, when I added the alcohol, all of the color would have run together and kind of created a muddy mess. So I've learned over the years that when you're working with um, doing an underpainting, in this way, it's best to do it in kind of, like I said, the, the family of values. Do your lightest values, your middle values, then your darker values, and add the alcohol and brush in between on each stage of that. So now I added a little bit more of this pretty pink in some of those middle value grasses. And here I am again, spraying the alcohol, working the darker values, and ink tense blocks are really neat because they, really explode with color and increase their value when you add water or alcohol. Now, why am I using alcohol? Like I said, it's kind of a alcohol water mix in this bottle because it dries faster. And if I used water, it would take longer to dry. And it would also be a little bit more drippy. I, I often like using this uh, alcohol approach more when doing an underpainting like this. And this Fisher 400 is excellent. Uh, it doesn't curl like UART paper does, if you're familiar with UART. Um, it's just a really good durable surface. So now let me go ahead and add all of these colors that I used with the ink tense blocks. By the way, you don't need to use all of these colors. You could do three or four of these values. And like I said, you could use soft pastels. You don't have to use Derwent ink tense blocks. I think the Derwent ink tense blocks are a little more intense with color. You certainly don't have to use them. And pastels, like I said, if you layered pastels of three values, the alcohol will dilute the pastels as well. They become paint. And with my beautiful golden glow underpainting complete, I am now adding soft pastels. Now I'm going to substantially speed up the pastel section for the Monet Cafe channel. This whole video is free, but if you're a patron of mine, you can get the entire video with my full commentary, with all the goodies, and this painting tutorial in the pastel portion of the video. And how do you become part of my Patreon family? It's super easy, patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. It's only $5 a month, and you can cancel at any time. While I've got you here, would you go ahead and like this video, leave me a comment, and subscribe to this channel. And now I hope you will sit back, relax, and enjoy this pastel painting portion of this painting. And also too, I normally like to superimpose the reference image in this uh, screen while I'm painting, but when you have a wide painting like this, you sometimes don't have room, but you can see it in the upper left corner there. Also, I'll have a link to the original reference image in the description of this video, so you can work from the original image. Again, if you're a patron of mine, you can find my altered uh, reference image as a downloadable attachment. Now look at these purples coming to life. Aren't they gorgeous? These were uh, a lot of the J. Luda purples, J. Luda pastels um, that I listed in the supply list. And uh, some of them were the Earthberry Morning Fog collection. And I think you should be able to see as I work how beautifully this underpainting created by using Derwent ink tense blocks with alcohol and a spritzer bottle and a brush, how beautifully it creates that glow, that under glow beneath these gorgeous purples and greens. And I really enjoyed creating this painting. I also realized how much I've missed painting larger. Not that this is huge, but it's a 16 by 20 sheet of the Fisher 400. I've turned it horizontally, so the 20 inches is across the top. And I would say it's probably about a 14 tall, so 20 by 14. And I just love painting large. I've got some more sheets of very large pastel paper that I ordered a couple of months ago, so I'm gonna be creating more large paintings. Also, I'm gonna be bringing you soon a little video showing you those chameleon pastels, the Earthberry Morning Fog Collection. I really love them. I love the shape, I love the application, and I love the fact that they change color when you rub them. You're just gonna be fascinated, it's so cool. A common question that I get when I do any sort of underpainting tutorial, creating an underpainting before you add pastel, is why did you create the underpainting? You just covered it all up. 
but actually I don't cover it all up. You should be able to see at this stage and even in the final painting that there are bits of the underpainting showing through, peeking through, especially in the middle ground and a little bit in the foreground too. And there is an influence even in the sky, even though I added, you know, a decent amount of uh, pretty golden and uh, peachy colors in the sky. Now here's some of those gorgeous J. Luda greens. I did darken up some of the foreground just to give the painting some depth that was feeling a little flat. So this creates a, a sense of depth and richness. And I used Prismacolor New Pastels. They're long skinny pastels. They're a little bit harder and they are excellent for flower stems, for grasses, and just little nice uh, thin linear marks. All right, here is the final. I took it outside. It's sometimes hard to get a really good image of it. And I was very happy with this painting. Uh, please let me know if you like the painting, if you like this tutorial, and if you're gonna give this technique a try. I love using a spritzer bottle for creating alcohol wash types of underpaintings. If you stayed to the end here, thank you so much for watching my video, hopefully subscribing to this channel, and for all of those of you who have followed me for years and my beautiful patrons on my Patreon page. As always, God bless and happy painting.